Well, ladies and gentlemen, week three of the USFL is finally here. It's finally come to a head. And right now, we got a lot to go over in week three um, as we wind down April, get into May, and everything is going to start getting everything's going to start getting a little bit clearer after this week, you know? So, Saturday and Sunday, it's going to be a real intriguing day next two days for the USFL. Um, Saturday, you got Tampa Bay, Houston. Uh, Tampa Bay is favored by two. It was originally one and a half. The line was the over-under 39. You know, Jordan Tiamu will need some, he'll need, he'll need more of everything this week. You know, he's got Christian Sam on the defensive line and stuff like that. But, I mean, the the bandits need more from from Jordan this week. They need more from Jordan Tomlin this week. And for the gamblers, you know, the spark is going to come from either Will Likely on the defense or Mark Thompson in the backfield. Who and again, you know, it's been kind of a weird season so far for Clayton Thorson. You know, you know, somebody. If, if, I mean, if the ba if the bandits, you know, can get after Thorson. You know, they might have to just give off the Mark Thompson the rest of the way. You know, it's just been like that this year for the Houston Gamblers so far. It's been a weird. It's been a weird one. Big. The game of the week obviously is Birmingham, New Orleans. This game, you know, got moved from its original time slot from like uh, two o'clock Sunday to the prime time Saturday night. And Jamar Smith, he's looking like the P.J. Walker, the Garrett Gilbert of the USFL so far and with guys like Victor Bolden Jr., Osiris Mitchell, CJ Marable, I mean they, they, this Birmingham Stallions team is looking like a team that can you know do whatever they want to do and with Kyle Stover the breakers defense on the other side you know it's gonna be an interesting battle between the Birmingham offense and the Breakers defense. A lot of people are picking the Breakers here. A lot of people are picking Breakers by three and a half. The over under here is 44 and a half. First things first for these Saturday games, I'm taking Tampa Bay. Take the under. For Birmingham, New Orleans, I'm taking Birmingham. Taking the over. Oh, yeah. So, there you go for the Saturday Sunday games. It's going to be a real interesting it's going to be a real interesting Saturday, I'll tell you that much. And then Sunday, you know, you got a Peacock exclusive game, one of the four Peacock exclusive games. That's uh, the New Jersey Philadelphia game. Pittsburgh Michigan starts us off and Josh Love, he may not be very good, but he's got a nice defense and some nice running backs. Mainly on the defensive side, we're talking Jalen McLean Sapp, who's been really good for the Maulers and these running backs, you know, you got Garrett Goshek, Madre London. They're they're a pretty interesting duo in the backfield, you know, because again, Pittsburgh likes to run the ball a lot, and you know that that's been that's been something of a focus. And if Shea Patterson, you know, for the Panthers can't get anything going and he throws interceptions or whatever, what does that mean? Does that mean we get Paxton Lynch or whatever? Because, I mean, again, you know, Michigan just has not been very good this year. Both these teams are winless, by the way. Somebody needs to get a win, and somebody's going to get it on this beautiful Sunday. And then, again, the late nightcap, the, you know, it's uh, Philadelphia, New Jersey. The Generals are going to need to figure something out on the QB side of things. Is it going to be Luis Perez? Is it going to be DeAndre Johnson? I don't know. We know Brian Scott's been playing a lot better. In fact, he leads the league in passing, you know, but can he keep this up? That, that's my biggest question. Again, that, that's my biggest question for Philadelphia. Um, now, they've got Michigan favorite by two. The over-under for the Michigan-Pittsburgh game is 39.5. I'm taking the under. Take the under, and I'm taking Pittsburgh to win this game. And for New Jersey-Philadelphia, taking Philadelphia. Philadelphia is favored by one. The over-under is 40.5, and, and I take the over here. You know, so there you go. There you have it. Um, we're going to segue here into some other things here since, you know, there, there's not enough for me to talk about when it comes to USFL, and that is the XFL. we got to segue into it. Um, you know, we know the head coaches now. We know some things 
we know some more things about the XFL coming back. Again, this is spring football, so you know we got to talk about everything here, spring football related. I've been waiting for a little bit to you know talk about all this, but you got Wade Phillips, Heinz Ward, Rod Woodson, Bob Stoops, Anthony Beck, Jim Haslett, Reggie Barlow, you know Terrell Buckley as the coaches. And then you have June Jones returning to Seattle, which confirms that Seattle will be coming back. We know about some of the um, expansion teams already, you know, like Orlando and Las Vegas, and I forgot the other one already off the top of my head. There's been a virtual meeting, you know, recently, you know, between the top XFL guys trying to compete against the USFL again. You know, people have been talking about it on Twitter for the past couple of weeks now. You know, oh well, the USFL and the XFL are gonna start competing against each other. Why is why are they competing against each other? Why can't we just have you know, you know, two leagues that can just coexist with each other? And that's just not the case. The way that's just that's just not the case. Again, egos get in the way of things, and we know this. We're talking indoor football and arena football a lot. If you've come here, you know. So the virtual meeting but with these top agents like Mark Ross, Doug Whaley, Russ Giglio, you know, they're they're trying to compete against the USFL. They want they want to get the XFL is trying to, you know, persuade, you know, players and stuff like that that they'll have higher salaries, better benefits, and that the February to May schedule that the XFL will be doing in twenty twenty three will be better on the players. You know, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be really intriguing to see how all this you know shakes out. You know, with the XFL, you know, trying to come back in 2023 because again, there's a lot that is going in, and that's that that's really gonna be something. You know, what can what can the XFL do that's different from the USFL in 2023? And you know, that could mean a multitude of things. We don't know all the things, but we know some of them. And, you know, the whole XFL-USFL debate shouldn't even be a debate. It's spring football. You know, just have fun out there. But, I mean, again, people are going to be people and make this into a competition that doesn't need to be a competition. You know. So there you have it. Um, I've been waiting for a while with, with some of the stuff with the XFL because again we we did not notice all of this you know initially you know it, it was start it was starting to come together and again I think it culminated on like you know a couple days ago when you know people were talking about like oh well these alternate football leagues shouldn't be you know competing against each other and they should be you know unionizing in harmony and that's just not how it works it's just not how it works like. I know one big YouTuber that you know covers alternate football leagues. He's he was he was, that was that was his tweet. He was like you know you know yada yada yada. Why why do we why do we do this? And I I and I responded. I responded to him. I was like, yo, this is not how this works. This is not how this works at all. Like egos get in the way of things a lot. And I I know I'm gonna keep harping on it, but I mean it's just it's the truth. It's the truth. Egos get in the way of making things the way they are and it's just it just is what it is so in any case that's gonna do it i'll see you all on sunday we have a triple header coming up on sunday yes that's right a triple header you know channel update this week in indoor football usfl bada bing bada boom bada bam gonna be great cannot wait to see you all tomorrow late tomorrow night you know probably around 11 ish you know, to talk the NFL draft because there's a lot that happened with the NFL draft, uh, and you know, I'm, I'm just gonna it's just gonna be real. So until then, I'll see you all Saturday night talking the NFL draft.